Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be cutting, grinding and polishing two agates uh, so I can show you guys how I work on them. I'm going to be cutting a small Chinese agate and a bigger one from Morocco. When cutting agates I always try to avoid cutting through windows, uh, cutting through fractures and I always try to go for the best image. After cutting the agates, the first thing I do is I go to my cast iron disc, my machine, um, also called a flat lap, and I try to grind away the saw marks that you can see uh, in the video as well. I use grit 280 for this, or sometimes 150, and I only stop using the grit when I don't see any saw marks anymore, and when the stone is completely flat. If it's not completely flat or there is a corner wrong anywhere, it will give you problems later on. So there is obviously a very big difference uh, between the agates. If you take a very small agate, it has a small surface and you don't need to grind that as long as you do with bigger agates. I tend to uh, flatten a little Chinese agate usually within one or two minutes. Whereas if I'm, if, if I'm grinding a bigger agate such as this Moroccan one, um, it may take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, maybe even more depending on whether the cut was good or if it's a bit crooked. Here we can see the most important part, that the agates need to be absolutely flat, no saw marks anywhere, otherwise you can grind all the way up to polishing and then you know, find out that you have to go back all the way to get marks out of the stone. Okay, here we see the next step, and it's a very important one, always clean uh, the disc after using grits because if you go to grit 400 after 280 you need to have all the rougher grit from the wheel there can't be anything left otherwise you'll make scratches and you'll have to go back again this grit 400 and what we're doing is we, we've flattened our agates and now we're trying to smoothen out the surface because once it's flat and we smoothen out the surface then we can actually start polishing so 400 is the next step. It goes from a flat rough stone here to a flat but smooth stone before we go on to the pre-polishing stage.
Here are the two agates just after the Great 400 and now we can start to see that the agates are going to reflect the surroundings, so for example my fingers or what's outside. the hardest part of flat lab grinding which is the pre-polish. I use grit 800 for this. Uh, why is this so difficult? Well you need to uh, be very careful with grit 800 and a cast iron disc or whatever disc you're using. Grit 800 is very thin. Uh, if you push too hard or if you move the stone in a wrong way you end up making scratches on the stone which are very hard to polish out. Some, some minor scratches sometimes do polish out, but it's uh, usually better to go back to grade 800 if you see any scratches on the stone after this process. Here is where the fun starts. Now we can really see that when we turn the agates in our hand it's actually reflecting my fingers and the surroundings, uh, which for me is a telltale sign that the surface is absolutely smooth and ready to be polished. We've arrived at the last step, which is usually most fun. Um, this is where all our work comes together. I use a polyurethane disc and I use cerium oxide to polish um, the agates and if all goes well we'll have a few beautiful mirrors in our hands afterwards. The last part of the video doesn't really need too much description. As you can see, I'm very happy with the results. I've got two beautiful mirrors, um, one little beautiful Chinese agate and a great Moroccan one from Aguim. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in a next video.